Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 1 from Module 1 for Algebra 1. All right, so Lesson 1 is graphing or the graphs of piecewise linear functions. The classwork exploratory challenge is something I'm going to skip because there is a video involved. You can watch the video because after a certain point, I believe it is the minute eight mark, they will give you the answer to the video. So I will skip that and start with the first example. And it says, here is an elevation versus time graph of a person's motion. Can we describe what the person might have been doing? Okay. All right, so how I'm going to explain this is I'm going to draw a line and <clears throat> I'm going to explain what's going on using these straight lines here. And let's see, just bear with me a moment. color because these are overlapping. I need to default that thickness is thin. Okay, so what I've done here is drawn horizontal lines to certain points. Now I'm going to do the same with vertical lines so I can explain what is happening here. All right. Again with that thickness line. Let's use blue for this one. Okay, just one more second here. Okay. Let's get those out of the way. Okay, so I drew a horizontal line here and a vertical line here, and this would mark approximately what? Two and one half minutes. So what happened here was this is the amount of time that went by. And this is the elevation change in that time. So the point right here where we elevated up to, right here, is a time of two and a half minutes and an elevation of 10 feet. So if I put that in a linear pair, x comma y, where this is my x or my time, and this is my y or my elevation, then I would say x was two and one half, and my y is 10. So what that means is in two and a half minutes, I rose 10 feet. So I, I went up a set of stairs or something and it took me two and a half minutes to go up 10 feet. Then we wanna look at what happens here. Well, at two and a half minute mark, all the way to the four minute mark, and I'm going to do an ordered pair here, now we're at four minutes and the y is still 10. So from two and a half to four is a minute and a half. So what happened here? Two things could have happened. For a minute and a half, I could have stood still and not moved so my elevation didn't change. Or I could have been walking on a level surface. One of those two outcomes could cause this type of uh, horizontal line on the graph. Either not moving for a period of time or moving and the elevation not changing here on a flat surface, if that makes sense. So that is a minute and a half difference from here to here. Then on the third one, then I'll do another ordered pair to get to this point here is, I didn't draw a vertical line here. So let's do that. Okay. 
So if five is, I'd say maybe four and a half minutes, four and one half, and my elevation went to 15. So in that 30 second interval, my elevation increased 15, from 10 to 15 feet, which is an elevation of five feet. Now again, from the four and a half minute mark to say five and a half minute mark approximately, right here, we were either standing still, elevation would not change, or we were walking on a flat surface. And then at the, let's call that five and a half minute mark, right here, that's where this line comes down, it's not quite six, all the way down to here, which would be, I don't know, seven, maybe a little more than seven, let's just call it seven. We went from 15 feet, okay, we went from 15 feet all the way down to approximately one foot. So this elevation point here was five and a half comma 15. And then over a short period of time, a minute and a half, we went from 15 all the way down to one. So we decreased 14 feet in a minute and a half. And then again, a flat surface could either mean not moving for a minute or walking on a flat surface for one minute. And then finally, from eight to 10 minutes, that's a two minute interval, we went from, okay, well, this one went from seven in a minute, the seven minute mark, we were at one foot. And then at the eight minute mark, we were still at one foot. That's this point here. And then finally, the last one, we're going down to 10 comma zero. In other words, eight to 10 is a two minute change and the elevation decreased by one foot. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So either these flat surfaces, either you're standing still or moving on a flat surface. All right, now it says piecewise defined linear function given non-overlapping intervals. Okay, so they can't overlap. On the real number line, so here's a real number line, a real piecewise linear function is a function from the union of intervals on the real number line that is defined by possibly different linear functions on each interval. So whenever we do a piecewise function, we say x equals some function, or y equals some function, I should say. And then we do one of these big brackets here. And so I am starting at 0, 0, and I'm going to the point 2, comma 4. Okay, and we can come up with a linear equation from that because my y-intercept is zero. Remember, y equals mx plus b. And my y is zero, or my y-intercept is zero. My b is zero. And I went up four over two. That's a slope of two. So my equation is y equals 2x plus zero, or simply y equals 2x. And then we have to give it a, a rule. So it is when x is 0 all the way up to 2. So from x being 0 to 2. So 2x when x is between 0 and 2. So x is between 0 and 2. It can equal 0. There's a value there. And then it can equal 2 because there's a value there. Okay, but then the function changes. And now we're looking at this piece. Okay. Now we're looking at this right here. And we are going from x equals 2 to x equals 5. So I'm going to put that here. So it's less than or equal to 5, less than or equal to 2, but what is the equation now? All right, so we have the point 2, 4, and we have the point 5, 1. Okay, so I'm going in a little bit more detail here, but it's all based on what you should have learned in math 8 or 7. Okay, so when you have two points, you can find the slope. M is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is 1 minus y1, which is 4, over x2, which is 5, 
minus x1, which is 2. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3, and 5 minus 2 is 3, so that is a slope of negative 1. Okay, so m equals negative 1. And now we need to find a y-intercept. So if we have y equals mx plus b, all we need to find is my b. We have a y. We'll use this, we'll use this point here. y is 1. Our slope we found is negative 1, and our x is 5 plus b. So 1 equals 1 times negative 5, so 1 equals negative 5 plus b. Add 5 to both sides, and we get b to equal 6. So my equation is y equals negative x plus 6. Okay, so if that continued on, we'd know that the y-intercept was at 6. Okay, and then finally, the last piece, we have some function that is going from x greater than or equal to 5, because it goes on forever. That arrow means it goes forever, so all x is at equal 5 or more. And that is a horizontal line at y equals one. So there is a piecewise function noted from this graph. So we could do the same here. Okay, so I erased everything here. So now here's another piecewise function. Nothing is overlapping. We have an x value of one. We have an x value of eight. We don't know any y values here. So I am not going to do a graph I'm not going to do a piecewise function in using that uh, y equals with the bracket because I don't have any y values, so I can't do this. But all they're showing here is that these do not overlap. This point here is defined down here, but not here. This continues here, but there's an opening here, and then it jumps up, and it closes the function there and continues on. So there are no overlapping pieces to this function. So this is also a piecewise function. Okay, that is the end of lesson one. Go to your problem set.